Welcome back to Copic in the Craft Room. This is Michelle Houghton here, and today I am going to be coloring these three little pigs from My Favorite Things. This is um, from a newer set that they have come out with, and I'm gonna so much cuteness, or so much cuteness, however you wanna pronounce that. So all these cute little pigs, I've seen these out, um, several people coloring them already, but I thought it would be fun to do. I have stamped them in a very faint um, kind of sepia or brown tone so that I can try a little no-line coloring. And then, um, you know me, most people are coloring these pink and I wanted to do something a little bit more unique or a little bit different. So I went online looking for photographs and found this image of these three little pigs and I thought, incredibly cute. I think I'm gonna aim for that. And then also this image of these guys was a pretty common one that I saw. So I'll make that brown guy more like this. But anyway, I've got a little reference point. I've chosen some colors. So I'm gonna work on them and then I'm gonna create a background as well. So I'm gonna zoom in and get coloring. So I am starting with a multi-liner to fill in the little pig's eyes and nostrils just because I know that those are going to disappear since I'm doing this no line coloring. And I'm starting with an E95 on the base of this first pig and I've divided off that middle section with my lightest color and I filled it in and now I'm using my E97 for the mid-tone and an E99 for the darkest shadow areas. I am working fairly fast. Obviously, I'm working even faster in high speed here. E97 to blend that back. And then the E95 is going to soften those lightest areas. Now, I did not wait long enough for that multi-liner to dry completely, and that's why I got a little bit of smearing on this first pig's eyes. Mistake on my part. I'm going to keep going though. So I've got my E95, E97, and now the E99 on the back end of this little pig. I've got my light source coming in from the front, kind of hitting his face. So it hits a little bit on the front of those back legs and his top of his kind of rump area. And then I'm using an R00 and an R20 for his little nose and mouth. W1 and W5 are going to add some shading. This is an area that's actually white on this particular pig. R00 is going to flesh out this next guy. He's going to have a pink base to him, kind of like some of the pigs that we're used to seeing. And then R20 is going to be the first for the mid-tone areas. I'm flicking in that color so it lightens up. And then E93 is my final color that I add just for a little bit of deeper shading. You'll notice on this guy that black stays put real tight. E93 to blend that out. And then I come in with my colorless blender because I'm actually going to leave that center area super light. R20, adding those tails. And E99 sneaks in on the other guy's tail. And then I bring in a W5. I've let that ink dry a little bit. The W5 is going to add some spots on this guy. The last pig, I'm going to start with W3, and I fill the entire little guy in. So I'm going all the way around. It takes me a few minutes actually to do this to get all those little pieces, to and then to also avoid his mouth and nose. So that first layer takes a little bit longer. The R00 is going in for his mouth and his nose. You're going to notice, if you get a chance to see it here, that the mouth actually pushes that ink out of the way, and so it got bigger on me. This is my W5 that's coming in for that first layer of shading. And then W7 is going to add the deepest color. And hopefully what you've seen by now on these three guys is this, the light is actually coming right down this center. So this guy gets shaded kind of right down the middle. His darker part coming up from underneath. And I'm coming back and blending that with W5. And here comes the W3 to lighten it further. And mostly just blending it together. It's pushing that color around. And then W1, I'm going to lighten up even a little bit further. W5 for the tail. 
and then I'm going to create a background. I'm starting with a G40 because it's my lightest color that I'm going to use on the grass and sketching my lines where I want the background. And I decided one of the hills I need a steeper hill. So I'm adding a new line, but because it's my lightest color, it doesn't really matter. G46 is what I started with on the ground. I'm trying this out. I'm going from dark to light. And then G43 next and G40 at the top. It takes a little bit more work than what I was planning on. So I'm working that pretty hard. I'm going back and forth between the three colors you can see. This next one, I'm gonna go back to my traditional way of doing this. I'm going back and starting with my lightest, that G40. Notice that extra line is gonna disappear right away. That's why I started my drawing with that lightest color, is that now I can hide even those mistakes where I decide I didn't want that line to be. G43 is the midtone. So on this hill, again, I started with my lightest, went to my second color, my midtone, and now I'm going into my deepest color or darkest color, G46, and I'm adding the shading at the bottom of the edge of the hill and coming up. And I'm sorry, I slid a little bit off the screen here for you guys. G43 to blend that in, and G40 at the top edge of the hill to soften all of those together. I forgot this little edge behind the this first pig, so I'm adding that G43. Four, three and four, six in on that back side. G four, zero again to start this top hill. So I'm going in the same order that I went on that middle one. That worked a whole lot better with this particular series of colors. G four, three is next. And I'm real careful around the pig and then I flick that color up from there so that it gets lighter at the end of those flicks and it's gonna make that blending easier. And I've turned them upside on their head because my hand's going to work a whole lot better in that direction. Careful around the tails. I don't want those little tails to disappear. Then G46 again from that base edge of the hill or where we see that hill go behind the, the more forward hill. Again, really slowing down around those little pigs and all their little details and flicking up from there. Blending with G43 and G40. And I'm gonna turn him back around, get that smoothed out a little bit more using those di three different G4s. And then I'm adding shadows. I started with a W3, but I'm noticing pretty quick that this isn't gonna necessarily do exactly what I want it to. It mapped out where I wanted them, but I'm gonna add a W5 to get a little bit darker, more solid shadow. This is a cast shadow, remember, underneath them. And then I'm adding a little G46 into those shadows. I felt like it got a little too warm. Then I've got a B000 that I'm starting in on that sky, and I'm really just aiming for a smooth blue sky. I'm not doing anything fancy here, so I'm doing circles, and I'm going over each area at least three to four times overlapping, and I realize at this point my marker is dry. If you could see it, that tip actually gets completely white or was turning white. So I am going to triple check my ink that I've got a B000. I kind of check the measurement on the side of the bottle, and then I notice I've got both ends of my marker off, and I'm carefully dripping ink into that chisel nib right along the side where you see that hill, and I double check that bottle, kind of check the side to see how much I got in, and I'm immediately ready to go again. Now, because it sat for a second, I am having to go all the way over some of those areas, but it just takes, because it's been colored already, it takes one quick swipe to get it all wet, and so it stays nice and smooth. Here we go. Three little pigs, very happy on a hill. I did lots of stuff today that I didn't necessarily know I was gonna do. I made some mistakes early on, which to me are glaring <laughs> and staring me in the face, but I think those are always worth learning from and sharing, so I don't hide a lot of that stuff. So I apologize for that. You guys get to see me make my bloopers. Um, but and I wasn't sure if I'd complete like this whole image. I don't know what I'm doing with this. It doesn't fit on a card. Um, I'd have to get like a bigger card size to even make this work. But I was having so much fun and I love the way the hills turned out. That was inspired um, 
by another artist, Copic artist that I featured recently on Copic in the Craft Room. So if I remember, I will add her link in, um, in the tagline here or the kind of comment bar so you guys can take a look at some of her artwork too but um had a great time fun stamp and fun to take it to the next level and do something a little different with it um but i just want to remind you if you have not done it yet um hopefully you have been noticing my regulars you've been noticing some changes on the copic in the craft room youtube page we are kind of updating and cleaning up shop and creating playlists so you can find things easier, tagging things, again, all about finding what the information that you want. Um, but in order to help us out, it would be really awesome if you have not done it yet to make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like this video if you have enjoyed yourself and gotten a good giggle and learned a few things. But and as always, please, I hope you know it is always okay to ask questions. I'm always listening and trying to answer those, not only questions, but requests for future videos. Lastly, join us over at Copic in the Craft Room over on Facebook because we have all sorts of great Copic information over there. So check that out as well. In the meantime, have a happy, colorful week, and I hope to see you back here next week. Thanks.